Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. Today I am sharing with you a week of plant chores, kind of. I definitely missed some days. I don't even know if I'm gonna call this a week of plant chores. Maybe I'll call it like a few days of plant chores or something again. Um, but I'm filming this intro at the end, so I've already filmed the past week uh, some plant care that I did over the past week. Honestly, it wasn't my ideal week of plant care. Was structure lacking? Yes. Was routine lacking? Yes. <laughs> but I was kind of just navigating a busy week and I did what I could. And I'm sharing it anyways because, you know, sometimes life is just like that. Sometimes it gets busy. If you're a regular viewer, you've probably heard me go on and on, especially in the past couple of months, about how I am trying to just make some improvements in my life and being becoming more organized and beating procrastination is definitely one of those things. And this applies not only to my plants, but also to things like my work and, you know, creative hobbies that I'm taking on and stuff like that. I'm definitely making progress, but, you know, the journey is a little bit like this. And this week was a little bit of a of a dip um, when it came to keeping up with all of my planty responsibilities, I suppose. Like I said, I've been in this kind of period of learning and growing and reflecting and reevaluating on how I do things and how I think about things. And a huge resource for me in making these improvements and these changes has been Skillshare. And they are so kindly sponsoring today's video, which is just perfect. So I'm going to talk about them a little bit. First of all, if you're not familiar with Skillshare, they're the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry pros. They offer so many different topics for every interest from design, film, illustration, productivity, and more. Last month, I created my very first crochet project thanks to Skillshare. This month, I've switched gears a little bit and I'm actually doing one of their curated learning paths right now. This is a really cool thing that Skillshare offers, especially if you're not sure where to start. So a learning path is basically a curated set of classes that are grouped together and they all kind of build on one another. I've been working through the creative productivity, kickstart and sustain any project learning path. I feel like this learning path was just made for me. I love love how it combines the creative aspect of, you know, like brain dumping, brainstorming, how to think of more unique ideas, how to think outside of the box. Um, it takes all that kind of stuff and it combines it with practical tips to increase productivity and actually accomplish what you want to accomplish. I've already gotten so many ideas on just like different exercises to do. So right here I was brainstorming about grow lights because I'm thinking about doing a video on grow lights. I just love learning new things and finding new ways to think so much. If you are also wanting to learn something new or perhaps you want to take your side hustle to the next level this year, Skillshare has tons of classes to support your goals. I will have a link down below in the description box and the first 500 people who click it are going to get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. All right, let's hop into the plant chores now.
Hello and good morning. I thought I would pop on while I'm just waiting for this batch of plants to drain. So yes, it is Friday morning today. It's now 6.49 and I'm just in the middle of watering. As you saw, I've mostly been doing all of my waterings in the morning because the house is just too cold at night to water plants and then, you know, have them sitting wet at night. So I've mostly been doing it first thing. I did get off track a little bit during the holidays, but I'm getting back on top of it. So my plan for today, I'm just doing a little bit of watering this morning and then I have to do some stuff around the house. I have some work to do, um, editing that I'll be doing on my laptop. And then in the afternoon, I'll probably be doing more watering because I do just feel like I want to get caught up and get on top of everything. So that's kind of my plan. It is quite cold out this morning. It's only two degrees and there is snow in the forecast for next week. It looks like it's supposed to get quite cold next week. So apparently winter is finally coming for us. And yeah, I'm a little bit nervous because I haven't had to deal with really cold, like below zero conditions here yet in this house. And our heat does kind of suck. So anyways, I'm gonna carry on for some more watering here for another 20 to 30 minutes. I think I'm gonna water my Thai constellation because she is due, I'm pretty sure. So I'm probably gonna take her to the sink next. But yeah, nothing too crazy going on this morning. It is a chilly day and just doing some watering and um, pole watering and stuff like that. Okay, so I just got everyone back into their places here and I also hung the poles back up on the wall. I reversed them so that the Glorious is closer to the window. I'm hoping it'll be able to get a little bit more light that way. It, I can see roots in the pot since I've repotted it in there, but um, I don't really have any new leaves yet. That's three cuttings that I potted up, I don't know, a few weeks ago now. So I'm just hoping to give it a little bit of a light boost. Um, and then the ring of fire is there that needs to be repotted and or actually no that needs to be chopped soon is what I'm going to be doing with that one and then down here I kind of wanted to well first of all I wanted to show you guys my little lights that I clipped on here so I was finding that the tops of my poles weren't really getting a lot of light and you can see that some of the leaves were facing downwards like if you look at the way that they're kind of facing because the tree lamp mostly shines on the lower part of them I suppose. So I decided to clip on my Sansi little clamp light onto the top of it. So now I'm getting light shining onto the top of the poles as well. And it's working really well so far. I mean, I just did it a few weeks ago, so I'm not seeing actual results yet, but just looking at it, I'm happy with um, the amount of coverage of light I'm getting in this corner now. I've actually moved things around in this area a little bit recently. I have my dubia here now with a plant spectrum light and I've got all of these lights on a smart uh, like timer thing now, which is really nice. As I was putting this Burl Marks fantasy back, the top extension of the moss pole actually slipped. I was holding it from here, which was a dumb thing to do, but I guess it wasn't in there very well and it slipped and this new leaf actually got pulled into the pole. So I'm pretty sure that's gonna come out damaged now which I'm kind of bummed about because I was really hoping to get some new leaves on there so that I could eventually chop this plant. I mean, I still will. I'm not happy with how the new growth has really been coming and I was hoping that that leaf was finally gonna be a nice one, but I think I just damaged it. So that is kind of annoying, but that's just how it goes sometimes. I'm also still getting damage on my medium, medium silver. Um, the damage that I was getting before these like brown spots so that really sucks as well because I have no idea what's causing it the new leaves are looking really good but I think I'm probably gonna end up chopping that plant which I'm not happy about but I just don't know what what is going on with it so yeah that's a little mini update on this corner um, I think I'm just waiting for the tie to drain right now and then I'm going to be done with my watering for this morning it's 7 20 now
Hello, happy Saturday. I'm just doing some watering and I'm not gonna bore you with filming <clears throat> every watering that I'm doing because like I said, I'm trying to do some every day. Did I say that in this video? I don't know, in one of my recent videos. Anyways, I do have to show you the new leaf on my Anthurium politiflorum because it is so long. I've had to move this plant because it used to be on a shelf uh, under the TV there. And then I noticed that the new leaf was coming in and it was almost touching the ground. So I'd have to move the pot back like every day or every two days because it would be inching closer and closer to the floor. And then I hadn't checked on it for a couple days and I saw it yesterday and it was all crumpled on the floor. Like it had grown way longer. So I have had to move it to my plant, my Vitz Show plant shelf over here, but oh my goodness, it is epic. This, it's still hardening off too. So this, oh my goodness, I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see, but this is the new one. It's over three and a half feet long. I just measured it yesterday, but oh my goodness, it is just massive, massive, massive. So this thing needs some water. And I also wanna make sure that it's getting fertilized as well. So I'm gonna be mixing up a fresh batch of my fertilizer and watering this guy through along with the rest of the plants that I need to water today. Okay, so here it is on the counter to give you a different perspective of just how massive this plant is. Can you see this leaf like going all the way down onto the floor, the new one? It's so crazy. It looks really, really good so far too. Oh my goodness. Obviously I'm not gonna mess with it too much, but yeah, just beautiful. And it's really nice to see that leaf coming in because so many of these leaves have gotten damaged over the past like six months. Like. This is one of the, I think this is actually the last one, the last leaf that came in and it got damaged right there. It ripped and then the bottom, somebody stepped on it and that got ripped off. So yeah, it's really nice to see just like a beautiful new leaf coming in. I don't know how big these leaves can get because I'm shocked every time a new leaf comes in at just the sheer length of it. Like it is so crazy. Such a freaking cool plant. Love this anthurium so much. So I'm just gonna give it a drink. It's just in this plastic pot. This actually really needs to be repotted. I should probably put that in my schedule because yeah, it's like mostly roots in here. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm gonna try to be really gentle because I don't wanna damage the new leaf. I have a little bit of fertilizer that's pre-mixed. So I'm just gonna use that up and then I'm gonna mix up a fresh batch. Do, do, do. Okay, so I need to refill these two bottles up and I'm just gonna be using my General Hydroponics Flora Series. I'm almost done with this. Look at that, you guys. The end of an era. I don't, well, I don't know if I'm gonna repurchase it. I am planning on putting more plants into pond and obviously this is like made for hydroponics. You can use it in soil too, but maybe I will repurchase it and use it mostly just for my semi-hydro plants, um, but I might just do like a regular liquid fertilizer that I don't have to mix up like three different things um, just for the rest of my plants, like for my soil plants. I'm thinking of getting the, um, oh gosh, I forget what it's called. I'll put it on the screen, the one that I'm thinking of getting. So let me know if you have any suggestions or if you've tried out the one that you see on the screen right now because that's the one that I'm thinking of ordering. Um, and I'm still also gonna be using my Osmo Coat, but I also want to have an option for liquid fertilizer, like an easy to use one, mix up one thing type of liquid fertilizer. So anyways, as you can see, I have some other plants to water as well. My Escaletto is right here. I'm gonna grab some other plants from around that area. Um, I'll probably just do that off camera or maybe I'll do a time lapse or something. But um, yeah, just kind of having a little watering moment.
Hello everybody, happy Monday. I'm just about to do some plant care, so I thought that I would hop on and take you with me, of course. Um, last Yesterday, I didn't really end up doing much plant care at all. I wanted to do this stuff that I'm going to do today, yesterday, but it just didn't happen, and that's just the way it goes sometimes. So, yeah, the only thing that I did yesterday was my Hoya spray, um, my foliar feed for my Hoyas last night, which you saw, and... Um, Honestly, I'm just proud of myself for doing that because I'm really trying to keep up with doing that once a week and I have done it for the last three weeks trying to do it on Sunday evenings. So yeah, I'm really just happy about that. It takes me probably, I don't know, 10 minutes to go around and spray all of my Hoyas. So it's not a huge time investment or anything, but um, it's just one of those things that <clears throat> it's easy to put off. So I'm just glad that I've been keeping up with it. And I honestly feel like my Hoyas are looking better already like I don't know I, I can't say it's really hard to determine what it is that is making a difference in plants sometimes you know what I mean because I've been trying to like also stay more on top of watering but I've noticed that several of my Hoya are really pushing out a lot of peduncles um, that I haven't seen before like my variegated Hoya Bella it's covered in peduncles let me show you actually I think I showed one of them in one of my last videos, but there's literally, there's like multiple peduncles on each vine now. So if you look at this vine, there is a peduncle right there and there's also, where's the other one? One right there. So yeah, it's just, that's two just on that vine. It's shooting out a new vine here as well, an offshoot of growth. Oh my gosh, and another offshoot. See, it's just going crazy. It's just going crazy and I swear the biggest difference has been using the foliar feed. But yeah, um, pretty much every vine has peduncles. There's one on the end of that one. The lighting is just like crap right now, so. There's one on the end of this one too. Yeah, anyways, it's gonna be hard to see, but um, I think that this is gonna bloom this year. Like, I really hope so because the peduncles are coming in hot and another one that is getting peduncles that I'm so excited about is my Hoya Thompsonii which mm, I will be so happy when that blooms and I don't know if it's the white or the pink it'll probably be the white but I have a little bit of hope that it's maybe the pink flowers so yeah we'll see there's a couple on here but I think this is the biggest one right do you see that right there at the tip of my nail yeah my Crimson Queen also has peduncled for me, which is just crazy. So yeah, things are happening with my Hoya and I'm really hoping that this is just gonna be a great year for them um, in regards to blooms and everything. So yeah, and we are gonna be working with one of my big Hoya today. So I guess I'll just talk about what my little plan is for this afternoon. Um, well, let's start with this one since I'm holding it. So this is my Hoya, uh, why was I gonna say Yedi? This is Hoya Waliniana UT152. And I don't know why, but this plant does this thing where it just all of a sudden tries to croak on me. This has happened to me before with this plant. I feel like I'll have better lighting maybe somewhere else, uh, maybe here. Anyways, this has happened to me before with this plant where it just like starts dropping leaves and trying to die off. And I don't know what this is about. I actually kind of find this with Hoya in general. Like I've had this problem with multiple of my Hoya. But what's going on right now with this one is that I have so many vines that have just died off. Like these leaves are completely dead and shriveled. And I thought that I was gonna lose the whole plant, but it just seems to be certain vines have just just died off. Like it's it's bizarre. It's truly, truly strange. And then other vines are completely healthy. And then this one, for example, these leaves are all just like shriveled. Like they're super wrinkly, super unhealthy. Like they'll probably just fall off soon. But then down at the bottom, there's new growth. Like, do you see those dark leaves? That is new growth coming in. So I just don't understand. And there's also a million peduncles coming in on this. I'll have to show you it better when we're sitting down at the table. But basically I need to cut off all of the dead parts of this plant, unfortunately, but it just needs to be done because those leaves are not coming back. So we need to go through and kind of clean that one up. And then I also need to sadly chop up my medium medium silver because 
it's been doing this if you've been following along on instagram stories it's been doing this thing where the leaves are just browning actually i think i've mentioned it in a video on here as well but it has been um getting these weird brown spots on the leaves and i can't seem to figure out why i was told that it could be like a severe case of edema where basically the cells are bursting they're taking in water too quickly and they're bursting and that can be something plants are more prone to in the winter time when temperatures drop um, or if there's not enough airflow so i've been trying to run a fan in here more and like keep temperatures up and everything but obviously it's winter anyways i still don't know if that's what's going on so i'm just gonna cut that plant up today because i was hoping the browning would stop when i removed the affected leaves but it hasn't it's just spread to more leaves so yeah we'll see i mean maybe something's going on with the roots i'm not sure we'll find out today and then i need to make up a new potting mix so i'm just going to be doing a pretty simple mix of just some soil perlite and orchid bark um but i just need to get that all mixed and ready to go because i'm going to be doing some repotting later this week i don't think i'm really going to do any today but i do want to get the mix ready today um but yeah those are the three tasks that we're going to be focusing on by the way, it is so rainy today. I don't know if you can see the window. It's just like completely covered in water. It's raining so much. Look at that gloomy looking window. Anyways, I'm actually gonna show you guys from my view for a second um, what this plant looks like so that I can show you just how many active peduncles it has because it's kind of crazy. And this one has always been a really great bloomer for me. <clears throat> So I'm not surprised, but it's just weird that half this plant is trying to croak on me and then the other half is like healthy, plump, thriving, blooming. So I don't know. If anyone knows why Hoya just like some vines will just completely die off sometimes. Like I don't even know if you can tell how shriveled this is, but best belief these leaves are completely, completely like, look, I can just, I can completely crumple it up. It's just dead and the leaves are supposed to be, you know, hard. <laughs> like it's not supposed to be bendy like that. I'll show you some of the peduncles um, right here. We have that one. We also have one down here, one right here. Like they're literally everywhere. The longer I look, the more I notice that there's like just so, so many active ones on here. This one is a little bit less far along, but it's still active. Oh my gosh, this one under here. Like, there's just, there's so many, you guys. It's crazy. Oh my gosh, down here, another one. Yeah, so if these, you know, continue to progress i'm gonna have a lot of blooms at once potentially the most blooms i've ever had on a hoya at once um i think that those are mostly on the healthy vines thankfully but yeah it is really cool just to see so many peduncles on here okay so i'm just gonna start finding whichever vines are not well and removing them so definitely this gonna set them off to the side i guess oops oh my gosh i got the hoya stuff on that this vine looks awful oh my gosh like what the heck There's new leaves down here, but even they seem like not in good condition. Like they feel really dried out. I don't know. Oh my gosh, I need a paper towel. Okay, I got a paper towel to put the cut side of the Hoyas on because Hoya are really sappy. They have this white sap stuff when you cut them. And it is so hard to get off if you let it dry on a surface. So I usually use a paper towel. I originally thought that this whole plant was dying on me and I was going to um, repot it. But now that I see that some of it is healthy, that's why I'm just going in to remove these. 
And yeah, I don't know what happened. It kind of started struggling when I brought it in from outside in the fall a couple months ago. So I don't know if it just took that transition really hard or if it dried out too much at one point. Not sure. Okay. Right before I moved last spring, this plant was in a really bad state as well. And I didn't really know why. It was getting just weird markings on the leaves and it was dropping them. Like it would just drop like five leaves a day for no apparent reason. I never really figured out what was causing that, but it eventually stopped. And this plant was doing amazing in the summer. It lived outside for the summer and it loved that. So I'm probably gonna put it outside in the spring here again. But it does make me nervous if the transition was really hard on it, bringing it in in the fall. Because if, if that's the case, then maybe it's not a good idea to put it outside. But it loved being outside, so I don't know. I'm undecided, but I do really wanna put it out again. Okay, man, we're removing a lot. I think I have some propagations going of this plant somewhere because I was worried I was gonna lose it. But maybe I'll take a couple more so that I can kind of fill it out again. So it is kind of sad to be removing so much of it. She was really in her prime um, at the end of the summer. Mm, yeah, this one's gotta go too, darn. Is this whole? I think these all might be coming from one vine that's like, or one, um, yeah, one vine or one plant in here that's dead, but I can't tell. Oh no, that one's a, oh, it's so hard to tell what's going on here. It looks like such a mess, but it looks like these dead vines are all coming off of this like dried out looking part right here. <sighs> so maybe I should have unpotted this and kind of separated out the unwell parts. I don't know. Or should I just cut this all, remove this all out? Oh, yeah, that woody stem situation is just like dead. For the most part, Hoyas are so hardy and they're some of my easiest plants to grow. But when they go downhill, they just like cruise downhill. It is kind of crazy. What the heck? Oh my gosh. I'll show you guys my pile of what I've removed after, but this is crazy. Yeah, this whole part needs to come out, I think. What the heck? Oh man, this plant is gonna be so much more sparse now. Oh my God, dirt just went into my tea. <laughs> dirt just went into my green tea. Okay. Okay, is that it? I think that's it. I freaking hope so because this plant is like piddly now. Oh my gosh, she's so bald. She's so bald, you guys. <laughs> what the heck? I cannot believe that. It feels good to get that stuff off though. This is what she's looking like now. So she has some filling in to do. It was pretty much half of the pot 
that I, oops, I watered this yesterday, so it's kind of dripping, but half, like this half, I pretty much removed. So hopefully she's gonna do better now. I don't know what the heck that was about. Um, hopefully these blooms are all going to end up opening as well. I'll update you guys on how she's doing, but yeah, that is just, that was craziness. That is my massive pile of everything that I removed. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna hang her back up here now. She just lives in the middle of this window, like that. Oh, I wanna take a couple cuttings, but I'm trying to find an end that doesn't have blooms on it. This one doesn't, that's only one leaf though. Those ones are really juvenile leaves. Okay, I'll let her grow out a little bit more or maybe once she is done blooming. Honestly, all of these ends have peduncles on them or just really young leaves, every single one. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna wait a little bit before I take a cutting to propagate, but um, that's gonna be my goal is to just continue to fill her out again because yeah, don't know what happened there, but she's had a minor setback. <laughs> I just remembered something else that I wanted to do today as well, which is check on my Christmas cactus cuttings, my very, or Christmas cactus, my variegated Thanksgiving cactus cuttings. Um, so we'll do a little update on those after um, this a medium, medium silver business. But yeah, I'm gonna get a potting mat set up because we're gonna unpot this baby and take some cuttings. I need to wash off these shears as well, actually. Yeah, I'm gonna sanitize these with alcohol. I think I might know the problem. This plant is absolutely soaked. This is what the drainage tray looks like and it's been days since I watered this, like a few days at least. Um, so that's not good. Luckily the roots still look really healthy, but what the heck, I've never like experienced overwatering a plant. I am such a hardcore underwaterer, it's ridiculous. I, I am not often faced with this issue, but if this has been going on um, without me kind of realizing, and I think that this is because I moisten the pole and then I don't let the plant drain for long enough in the sink or in the tub or whatever. Um, but if this has been going on, then it could definitely be edema. The plant is literally sitting in water. So the leaves, the cells are just bursting on the leaves because they're taking in so much. I'm gonna need to check the rest of my plants on that shelf, but um, this is what the damage looks like on this one. <clears throat> this has been happening for the past probably month on different leaves, so. Might be a watering issue, you guys. Might be a watering issue. I'm just gonna remove the damaged leaves at this point. I don't think I need to go ahead and chop this plant. I'm gonna try for a little bit longer to grow this and see if I can resolve the issue. I think that was the worst. I mean, this one has some damage on it too, but it's only really some spots at the bottom like that. So yeah, okay. <laughs> that was not what I was expecting. Like I said, I never, I never really overwater plants. 
So I'm gonna have to be more aware of that. I feel like in the summer that wouldn't even be noticeable. I was having to water my plants so, so often. Like that water would have just been gone so quickly. But because it's winter, any water that doesn't get drained in the sink or the tub is just going to accumulate in here and make our plants unwell. All right, well, let's hope that's the issue and I can just fix the overwatering. That's honestly kind of embarrassing that I didn't notice that, but <laughs> that's how it goes sometimes, I guess. Okay, hello. It is a little bit later because I ended up taking the DOGs for a WALK. Um, so I'm back. It's the evening and I wanted to do this little check-in on the variegated Thanksgiving cactus cuttings. Now, some of them aren't looking bad. Um, some of them are actually looking pretty okay, like this one. But some of them are looking a little sad <laughs> i don't think that these two are gonna make it although i think i knocked one of these the other day and i could see roots growing oh my gosh yeah look at that it's rooted even though it's so dry and floppy so i'm still i'm gonna give these some water um and see if they end up perking up and making it because i have had a couple of cuttings of these before that were quite floppy, like wrinkled and floppy. Um, more like this one though, not so much, not like this extreme, but I've seen them be wrinkly and floppy. And then once they start to get more established, they perk up. So I'm still gonna keep all of these. And like, I don't know if there's roots on these ones, but let's check. Yeah, there's little roots on this one as well. Can you see that? Even though this is so thin and shriveled, <laughs> Um, I'll be impressed if these all live, but it is promising to see roots on them, so I'm going to keep them. We're going to keep trying because I want as many cuttings as possible. So I'm just going to get my squirt bottle and then water all of these. All right. This is the Molly's. A cactus and succulent mix and I really like it so far I've used it to root a Hornia as well and it rooted really well in this mix I've also recently ordered I placed an order for some potting supplies the other day and um, I also ordered some more bags of my Molly's mix the aeroid mix and then and then they've also come out with an orchid mix so I ordered one bag of that to try out as well so I'll have tried all three of their mixes available I'm just curious about it okay so that is how much I'm gonna give them and um, yeah that's it and then I'm just gonna watch and wait and hopefully see these perk up. I'm not at all worried about the ones that are still standing up. It's just these two that are looking a little questionable, but you never know, right? As for me, I'm moving into editing mode for the rest of the night. It's not great lighting to be filming anyways. It's like eight o'clock and dark out and stuff. So I'll probably hop on here tomorrow and we'll make the potting mix that I need to make. And oh my goodness, I have a lot of watering to do tomorrow as well. I haven't been doing all of my watering on camera because I feel like that's just kind of, I don't know. <laughs> There's only so much I can do to make watering footage interesting, I feel, but Anyways, I will talk to y'all tomorrow. Hello everybody, happy Tuesday. I was actually just about to start filming for this video, like literally just about to start my plant stuff for the day. And I received a big heavy package at the door. So I just brought this in and I'm like, what in the world is in here? Like, what did I order? But it's my potting mix from Molly's um, or from Berry Plants, the Molly's Aeroid mix that I love using. And I also ordered their new orchid mix to try out. So I'm so happy because I have been hurting for potting mix. And um, we're actually gonna be mixing, mixing up more of my DIY mix today, like I said. So it's funny that this came today because I'm just having like a potting mix themed day, I suppose. I've got my bag of soil that I'm gonna be using for my DIY. DIY mix right there. I've got perlite right there. My Molly's mix right here. We are 
We're back in business, baby. So um, I'm gonna open this up. I'm so surprised. I honestly don't even think I got a shipping notification email. It just came. Um, but I'm very glad that it's here. Okay, let's open her up. It feels so good to be stocking back up on things because for so long I was out of this mix. Like, I don't think... I think I've been out since either September or October and I love my Molly's mix. So I kind of always want to have some of that on hand for my plants that I, I kind of prioritize using this mix for plants that I am like really, I don't know, really obsessed with. Like for example, I potted my Monstera Thai Constellation into the Molly's mix and it's doing amazing. Um, and I also like to use it for my alocasia specifically because I've noticed that they just, they freaking pop off when I pot them into this Molly's mix. So um, I bet Anthurium, I don't know if I have any Anthurium, oh yeah I do, I do have one of my Anthurium potted in it as well. Honestly so many plants would love it, but I try to like be picky <laughs> with what, which plants I give it to, um, because it's just like so nice and I don't want to use it all up on a plant that's not like fully gonna appreciate it I guess. I don't know, this is just how my brain works. Um, I also have my black pagoda lipstick plant potted into the molly's aeroid mix and that plant has bloomed like i have never seen before it is actually kind of crazy just how well it's done so yeah obviously i'm obsessed and i placed this order with my own money so not sponsored or anything however i do have a discount code with them um, if you would like to use that and also another awesome thing about molly's and this is kind of a problem that i've been facing with trying to order potting mix supplies and amendments and stuff is that shipping is so freaking expensive because obviously this is very heavy to ship so that's kind of a problem i've been running into with trying to stock up on other supplies but very plants which is the makers of the molly's mix they do free shipping over a hundred dollars i think so when i need to stock up i just order enough bags to like get over that threshold and then the shipping is free which is amazing but anyways that's my little my little ramble i'm just i'm such a big fan of this potting mix Something else is here. We just recently got a, um, what should we call it, a doorbell camera, and somebody just rang it for the first time. <laughs> and it's not really like in the spot where a doorbell would normally be, so it's kind of funny. And I'm highly entertained by all of the videos that I'm getting from this thing. <laughs> but, anyways, okay, back to our potting mix. Oh my gosh. These are pretty big bags. So this is the new orchid mix, um, max draining and high aeration. I got the 10 dry quarts size of all of these bags or 11 liters. And this, no, oh, maybe it doesn't say what's in it. I think it says on the website what's in it. But anyways, I think that I actually might try this for my um, Bulbophyllum orchid because I'm probably gonna repot that sometime soon. And yeah, I don't know. That's really my only like orchid. I have my vanilla orchid, but I don't think that, I mean, maybe I could put it in here. Let me know, should I be potting my vanilla orchid in like an orchid mix? Or I think before I just had it in an aeroid mix and it did fine because there's like epiphytic orchids and then terrestrial orchids, I think. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I literally don't know anything about orchids. I'm just, I'm just rambling. But anyways, this is the new mix that I'm excited to try. And I can use this for other plants, not just orchids. But I did have my orchid in mind when I ordered this. And I kind of want to try a couple more orchids. So good to have this on hand. And then I just got four bags of the Aeroids, the Aeroid mix. So the only thing that I didn't get is the cactus and succulent mix, and that's because I still have a couple of bags of that. But honestly, in preparation for spring, I should probably grab a couple of more bags of that. Um, so we'll see. It is expensive to buy potting mixes and potting supplies, obviously, so I'm kind of going to hold off a little bit before I pick up more of the cactus mix, but, um, wow. <laughs> I was not expecting to have this haul today, but I'm very excited that these came and I'm actually filming a chatty repot video for Patreon later today. So maybe I'll be able to use some of my mixes that just came in. It's perfect timing. 
Anyways, okay, I'm actually gonna do some watering right now, which is what I was originally gonna jump on here and do before I wanted to unbox that package with you. Actually, I honestly don't even know, I don't even know if I should do my watering right now. I kind of want to hold off on that until later. I'm trying not to water in the evenings, but I kind of think I might have to today because I have multiple videos to film today and I don't wanna lose light. So maybe we'll make our potting mix and then I'll pop back on here on the evening and do the watering that I need to do. <sighs> I have a really busy week and I feel like this whole video has just been kind of like jumbled or like, I don't know. I, it hasn't been as productive as I was hoping, but I um, am trying to be okay with that, <laughs> basically. I'm honestly still recovering from a really anxious Christmas break, so that's why I'm just trying to give myself some grace with trying to get back into the swing of everything. And I have a really busy week this week with work, and then I also have a busy weekend. I have like multiple things happening this weekend. Um, so yeah, it's just a busy time. So if I'm not like perfectly on my plant schedule, I just, I need to be gentle with myself, so. But it's fine, like I've been keeping up with everything okay. And one of the videos that I'm filming today is actually, um like redoing not redoing but reorganizing taking all the plants off of this shelf cleaning it reorganizing and then putting a new grow light up there so i'm gonna be watering all of those plants today i guess in that video which should be up before this video so i'm not going to include that you're, these plants will get watered today but you're not going to see me do it because i'm going to be doing it for in that video <laughs> um anyways i think that's it I gotta get rolling here, so let's throw together a quick potting mix. Okay, so here are my supplies. I actually still have a little bit of my um, indoor potting mix that I was using uh, previously to make my just simple DIY mix. <clears throat> so I'm gonna use the rest of that, of that up. But then I also recently got this Promix HP um, to be the base. I've heard people say that this is the best, like, you know, big box store budget option for soil. So um, I was like, all right, I'm gonna give it a go. And I am trying to keep this simple mix as affordable as possible. And I've recently just bought a bunch of amendments. By a bunch, I mean bark and perlite, but like a massive quantity because it's cheaper to buy things in bulk. Um, but that's not here yet. So I'm still using up what I've been buying in the past, which is very, very expensive, like $13 for, what is this, three liters? Three liters of bark, like that's, it's just insane how expensive it gets. Um, so I'm waiting for my new, like big bags of supplies to come in. Anyways, long story short, I'm just trying to keep it as affordable and just like simple as possible for my basic DIY mix here. For now, I'm just gonna be using this perlite. This is just miracle Grow. Honestly, I don't really like this perlite. It's so small, it's pretty crap, but it's better than nothing. And this is just for me to be able to do this batch before my larger size perlite comes in the mail which will probably be next week but anyways i just picked these things up from canadian tire um a few days ago these are from garden works if you're in bc and then i have my bins here that we're going to be filling up i'm going to fill up this one i think i'm gonna there's some tree fern mix left over in this larger bin underneath and i think i'm going to be adding that into here and just creating a standard chunky mix which i use for like my philodendron my monstera even my hoya I kind of use that just standard mix for a lot of things and then I can just adjust it or make a smaller batch if I'm making a mix for a different plant like a begonia or something. Actually, I think I'm gonna reverse that. I think I'm gonna use this larger bin to um, make my mix in and then this I'm gonna just empty into there and use this one for storage of something else later on. That makes more sense because I'd rather have the bigger bin full of my mix. I feel like my brain is not very coherent lately so I hope that y'all are making sense of everything that I am saying throughout this video. Um, yeah, I feel like my brain is just kind of hectic. Anyways, uh, so we're gonna be using this bigger bin, like I said. Wow, there's actually quite a bit of tree fern mix in here still. 
I really like tree fern. I definitely can't use it on its own as an underwater because it's just too fibrous and it doesn't retain enough water. For me, I'd have to mix it with my soil or like coco coir or something. Um, but I do really like it like mixed with other things. This is how much I have left in there. I haven't repurchased it just because, I don't know, like I'm just happy using coco coir or soil instead and tree fern fiber is really, really expensive. So it's just kind of something that I don't think is necessary for me at least. Um, I think it's great and I love that it's more sustainable and everything, but it's, it's like really freaking expensive. If you buy it, then you know, like a small bag is honestly like 60 or $70 plus shipping. Okay, I'm just gonna combine these. Then we have just this bin to use for, I don't know, to store my orchid bark or to store my perlite when it comes. I was talking in one of my last videos about how I really want to do like a, a soil bar or a potting mix bar situation where I store all of my amendments in bins and then I can just scoop them and um, just have everything within reach and organized whenever I need to do up a soil mix. So that's why I'm kind of wanting to keep extra bins around. I'm gonna go put a mask on. It's already really dusty. <coughs> Gosh. Huh. It's the tree fern that gets me, I'm pretty sure. It's like really dusty. Okay, so I'm gonna just pour the rest of this potting mix in here. Wow, I'm not giving you a very good view, am I? <laughs> There's like everything in front of the camera. Sorry. I'm just gonna dump, there's like a tiny bit of perlite in here. I'm just gonna dump in, use up all these little bags. Yeah, these little bags are not the move. Like in a pinch, it's fine, but when you have 200 plants, <laughs> this is just not, not feasible. Yeah, I might not need to put as much bark because I have the tree fern in here. I'm just gonna give it a little mix and see kind of how, how it's looking. I'm gonna open my big bag here. Of this stuff. Okay. Oh wow, it has more perlite than I was expecting. Oh wow, oh my gosh, okay, okay, okay. Like usually these store-bought uh, potting mixes don't normally have that much perlite. I mean, it is really fine perlite, but still, I'm kind of impressed. And it already has mycorrhizae in it as well, which is great. Okay, so I'm gonna need to add more bark and I'll probably add a little bit more perlite. I wish I had my chunky perlite here right now, but I mean, I can always add it once it comes later this week, hopefully. It's only coming from the mainland and it shipped today. So I'm hoping it won't take more than like two or three days to get here. Okay.
Ugh, so small. Why? I actually should save that bag of perlite for my begonias because I feel like that is one plant that would benefit from having a more fine perlite <clears throat> for their fine little roots and maybe even for like my pinguicula. That's a good thought. I just don't like that fine of perlite for my my aeroids and stuff. Okay, I'm trying to decide. Do I want to add anything? I think I might do a little bit more bark. good. I want to fill, have this filled up to the top, but I think I'm going to wait until my chunkier perlite gets here. This is good enough for now. I might use this on some plants later today when I'm filming my other video, but, um, what is that? Oh my gosh. Wasn't sure if it was compacted soil or rock. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna leave this like that for now. I mean, it's still pretty. It's not bad. Is it my favorite mix I've ever made? No, but I think it's gonna be good enough. Um, got a lot of sticks in here. All right, donezo. I actually think the last thing I'm gonna do is just label what the ingredients are in this because it does change a little bit. Like for example, I have some leftover tree fern in here this time. So I like to know that, especially because I'm trying to get better with my documentation and like getting plants in the Planta app and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna write it down. Okay, this one, we have a lot of different stuff in here though. So, um, what do we have? Uh, the garden works soil, garden works soil, uh, pro mix, HP, um, will grow orchid bark tree fern fiber. Um, some will grow perlite. And Miracle Grow Perlite. Is that it? I think so. Just different variations of perlite and bark and soil. Okay, I'm gonna put this away and carry on with my other filming that I have to do today. So, like I said, I will check in with y'all later. Hello, everybody from Olive and I. I have to talk really quietly because my boyfriend is sleeping. It's 11.14 p.m. I'm just reporting back to let you know that I have literally done nothing else with the plants this week. I Actually, that's not true. I didn't do the watering that I was talking about doing in the last clip, 
but I did water and like do this whole shelf area like I was saying um, and I've already posted that video so those plants are all well looked after but the rest of my plants y'all they need some help so tomorrow I'm gonna be doing a lot of stuff but it is time for this video to end now so thank you so much for joining me I really appreciate you watching like I said I feel like this was not my best week of plant chores but that's okay i hope that you enjoyed hanging out with me regardless and thank you so much to skillshare for sponsoring don't forget to check out the link down below in the description box the first 500 people will get one free month of skillshare i think that that is it for me this one really wants to go to bed and honestly so do i so good night uh thank you so so much for watching and i will see you in the next one bye Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, she's she's done with me. She's done with me. She's like, why are we awake? <laughs>